Hey guys, t here. Today I got to look at the Isikaze. It's a tier 3 IGN Japanese destroyer. It's on the map Big Race. I got my build here. You can see I got Tanaka. This isn't going to be a typical tier 3 build, hopefully, <laughs> unless you're a seal clubber. I'm going to approach this video from the perspective of what I would recommend working on for people that are new to stealth torpedo boats, which would be the Japanese destroyer line. So rather than play 10 games and find the one where I beat up on <laughs> these players the most, I just think I think the Isikaze in the hands of an experienced destroyer player is probably the there's a big disparity between that performance. Like, you can get into Wyoming as an experienced player, and because of the the random number generation aspects of your shots hitting or not hitting, I mean, you're still bound to do better than the average Tier 3 player, but I feel like being an experienced Destroyer player, it's just not really necessary for me to play the ship a lot just to get some footage of it, so here's what I would recommend working on for someone who's starting out on this line. First thing first is understanding the map. Now I understand when you're starting off looking at the map is difficult. It's not your first priority. You're still getting your bearings. But you need to understand those two circles. The white one is your firing range. The blue one is your standard detectability range. Meaning, and if you haven't seen my vision mechanics video it's in the beginner series I would recommend checking that out I think that's probably the most important beginner series video I have but just briefly if an enemy ship crosses in that blue line then I appear on their screen and on their map and I am detected for as long as I am in there now if I fire my guns that blue circle goes to the size of the white circle for 20 seconds All right, and that's the basic there's nuances to that again those are laid out in the vision mechanics video I don't want to make this whole video about vision mechanics but to play stealth torpedo boats that's the that's main thing you need to know All right, and the blue circle you know controlling the vision now here you can see I'm detected why is that I'm proxy spotted by this guy so I moved within two kilometers of, of this Clemson that was on the other side of, the island, side of that island they're automatically going to detect me and detect me in that situation now the next thing I would recommend working on is aiming your torpedoes. Now low tier, when you're playing tier 2, tier 3 destroyers, you're typically going to be going against opponents who are sailing in straight lines for the most part. They're, they're spending a lot of time aiming down the sights and just trying to figure out how to aim their guns. And that's not going to give them a lot of time to pull back and focus on where they're going. So when you're aiming your torps, if you go to torp mode you have that indicator that appears on the screen just practice laying one salvo on that indicator if you have three la launchers like I do here you can see I make a spread by shooting one on the indicator and then one to each side now here I have to slam on the brakes and stop because you know incoming torps I could have ended the game very easily had I hit those so slam on the brakes turn in to them that's usually the most effective play to avoid torpedoes but just practice on getting these spreads in the water. The spreads are going to be one of your main tools for hitting ships, especially at distance. So practice getting these spreads down. And again, you want to shoot one directly where the aim indicator is on the, on the map or on the screen. And then one... I usually do it like... You know, one on the indicator, one covering the right half of the indicator, one covering the left half of the indicator. That creates a pretty tight spread, but it'll still get some good coverage as it spreads out. And I'd recommend using narrow spread torpedoes until you get the hang of the torpedoes. I think widespread torpedoes are a much more advanced play to figure out when to use those effectively. But once you get the hang of launching torps, you can begin to experiment with those, but narrow spreads in general are easier to aim and they're easier to understand what they're going to do. Now a lot of these topics I am bringing up I have covered in the beginner series videos more extensively. I'm just kind of touching on them here. So if you found this video by searching for Isikaze or whatever you search for and you're kind of new to the channel, there's a lot of resources that I've made for beginners to teach the game specifically. So I would recommend checking those out. Um, they're going to go into each topic that I'm bringing up more in depth and kind of cover it 
to the extent that I felt was um, necessary to fully explain it for beginners. But again, I'm just I'm these are good things that as I was playing this, I'm like, well, that would be a good advice, you know, when you're just starting out. It'd be nice if someone would point that out. So you know, we got. 36k, I mean, is that good? Is that a high damage for an Isakaza game? I don't know, probably. Maybe. Maybe not. There's not a lot of battleships at tier 2, tier 3 games. If you're in a tier 4 match, you might get a lot more battleships, then you could potentially rack up some higher damage games. Um, but for a match like this, where it's tier 2, tier 3, there's a lot of times you're not going to have any battleships. So... In those situations, I mean, you can have a very effective okay, game. You'll see at the end the score in terms of XP earned is pretty good compared to the rest of the field. So you can get, you can enhance that by basically all those flags in the top corner. That's where you're going to be getting XP from. You can get it from spotting, which again, this is just all covered in beginner series videos, but just providing vision for your team on enemy targets to shoot at. Um, just doing the little things like being in the cap right now I'm accruing points for my team that's undoubtedly giving me more experience so in general anything that helps your team is going to help your score at the end and help you level up your ships now here's another good thing to practice anytime there's a smoke cloud and you have torpedoes on your boat and you can safely launch the torpedoes at the smoke cloud go ahead and do it and you can see here you can see his tracers where they're emanating from that's a good place to launch. Espe new players especially will sit still once the smoke is generated. They think they'll be safe. Um, you can see here he's been flushed out because our team's getting close enough. But in general, you can fire the torps at their last known position and then just kind of, as you gain experience, you'll kind of be able to get in their mind and say, okay, where would I go? Would I back up? Would I go forward? What would this guy be doing? Most likely, if the cloud continues to expand, that means they're moving and there's more puffs being generated. So if the cloud's moving in one direction, you can surmise that the destroyer is continuing to move in that direction. And again, aim your torpedoes accordingly. Here's another good thing to practice, dodging torpedoes. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, you definitely get better at it as you get experience, but dodging torpedoes is quite tricky. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. But in general, if you're facing directly at the torpedoes or directly away from the torpedoes, you're going to have a lot better success. Um, generally, they're spread out. And due to that spread, if you're pointing directly at them, for instance, you're probably only going to have one, maybe two, that's likely going to be heading in your direction, which is a lot easier to dodge. If you're pointed broadside at the salvo, you're going to have three, four, or five potentially aimed at you. And those are a lot harder to dodge. So... Why am I flipping around here? I think I was jamming onto a song that was playing. So hopefully that's not too annoying. But those are all things to work on. Dodging torpedoes, shooting clouds, aiming torpedoes from a basic standpoint. Basically, the trajectory of becoming a good torpedo player is learning to fire at the aim indicator successfully. And then the next step is learning to not fire at the aim indicator. And what I mean by that is once you gain the experience and you gain the psychological knowledge of what players are going to likely do in certain situations then you'll use the aim indicator as a snapshot in time and then you'll guess what's this player likely to do and then rather than aiming directly at the aim indicator like let's say I'm assuming this guy's going to turn to my right well if I launch it directly at the aim indicator then if he does make that turn that's going to miss so I would aim him to the right if that's what I believe he's going to do. So hopefully that video gave you some ideas on what to work on to become a good destroyer player. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you should consider subscribing. I got a lot of World of Warships content coming all the time. Questions for me, comments, leave them below. I love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you later. Alright, peace.